Disclaimer, this video may not be suitable for all audiences. Hello, my name is James from The Gaming Gladiator. Welcome to another video. What today we're going to be playing Doki Doki Literature Club. This game is not suitable for children um, or those who are easily disturbed. Remember that. Um, individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience playing this game for content. Oh, don't die. By playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you are at least 13 years of age and you consent to your exposure of highly disturbing con Oh my god. What, what am I doing? This is a horror game. This, guys, this is a horror game. Yep. Oh my god. Do I need this on my YouTube channel? We're, we're, we're gonna go along with it. If it, if it gets too bad, I'm just not gonna upload it. Hey, I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you know each, you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but um, starting around high school, we would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's gonna chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running anyway. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Uh, what? I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Maybe only because I decided to stop and wait for you. No. Oh. <laughs> you say that like you're thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, James. Oh, God. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Oh, Jesus. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say. Cross straight together, Mary. Oh, this is gonna be a lot of reading for me. This is gonna be like a lot of reading. As we draw near the streets, become increasingly speckled with other students making the daily commute. By the way, James, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Uh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations, but I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by <clears throat> on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Oh, oops. So, I'm gonna make one thing clear to you guys. I do not enjoy anime at all. There's really nothing I enjoy about anime. Ever. There's been one or two anime games that were tolerable to me, but other than that, I don't really enjoy anime that much. So this game might not be the best for me. <coughs> I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills for college. Indeed I won't. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. Okay. 
and I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat, a, a neat in a few years because you're not. I need to look up what that word says. Dumb. Becoming a neat. Uh, what, what's going on here? What on earth is this? What is a... The young person who is not in education, employment, or training. The acronym NEAT was first used in the United Kingdom, but is, its use has spread to other countries and regions, including Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Taiwan, and the United States. Okay. So it's, it's a guy who's not employed uh, in education or anything. <clears throat> you trust me, right? <clears throat> Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. <clears throat> I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay. Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind. At least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. I'm trying to find a way to move my mic closer to me. There we go. Okay, mic's way closer to me now. But it's also. Oh! Oops. Don't worry, guys. I'll, I'm getting a microphone stand soon enough. And uh, it's gonna solve the whole thing. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sari wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Oh, no. Hello, Sayori. Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting there and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know, you know, know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Say, are we? Yeah. There's no way I'm going to your club. Meanie. So he's vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. <clears throat> in fact, I'm 99% sure that she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. <clears throat> that said, my interest in literature literature club is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I'd be bringing in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. How do you pronounce these names? Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori was really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning to have planned all this out. 
I let out a long sigh. Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Oh, this whole game. It doesn't seem like a horror game at all. When When is horror coming in? I dejectively follow Sarah across the school and upstairs a section of the school I rarely visit being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sarah, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member said, yo, where is everybody? The only person in here. What do you mean everyone? I told you, don't call me a new member. Uh, I glance around the room. Welcome to Lydia Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sarah always says nice things about you. Seriously, you bought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, James, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of... not gonna say that what are you looking at if you want to say something say it say Natsuki Oomph. the girl with the sir attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year she's also the one who made cupcakes according to say eh? you can just ignore her when she gets moody Sayori says that quietly into my ear. She turns back to the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. This is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Okay, this all of this reading. I don't like it. D don't say anything like that. Yuri, who appears comparatively more um, mature and timid, seems to have heard. Have a hard time keeping up with the people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, oh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica. Is that right? No, I don't. That's right. Who is she? It's great to see you again. Smile sweetly. Who, who is she? We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Who is she? Close following looks smart, beautiful, and athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. Okay. I'm gonna smile at me so generally feels a little. You too, Monica. Come sit down, James. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Jeez. Sorry, I got a little too excited. <laughs> what is this game? Then how about I make some tea as well? What is this game? Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! What am I le- what? <laughs> he lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. Do I have to do the voices? So cute! Oh my god, no. <laughs> I have no idea why you were so... Um, <clears throat> no, I, I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. I'm already getting tired of eating. Well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sarah so grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious. Sarah so talks with a mouthful and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I don't know if like I'm pronouncing these names correctly, and I'm sorry if I'm not, but I'm just going to call her Natsuki, because that's all I can think of for the pronunciation of that. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. 
she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this summer before? Made them for you or anything. Uh, I thought you technically did, Sayori said. Well, m <laughs> maybe, but not for, y you know, you, dummy. Indeed, I am a dummy. All right, all right. I give up on uh, Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake chair. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. What? Insulted Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at it. So what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me you shouldn't tell Monica that it, I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any club yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? I need to move some stuff so I can move my keyboard back. As, Pancha, as the president of the Literature Club, it is my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member of any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Oh, well, you know, to be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. Feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. So, so far, I haven't seen any game part of this game. I've just read a lot. Um, yeah, in front of still images. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. Must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's coming, when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everybody? Yeah, we'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So James, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past three years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? What's what's manga? This head from fucks up. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. 
What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traced the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep con that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The Yuri level of the, the, the oh my gosh, the level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. Distant Deluxe Edition and Doki Doki Literature Club. I am forever first to play games that include so much reading. Ugh. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seemed so reserved by the timid, by the timid sense in the moment I walked in. But it's obvious the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately make an advantage of your own lack of imagination to uh, completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of her lately. Ah, I read a her book once. Oh, fine. They, they at least said the word her once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimum level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really, I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or it takes me to another world, then I can't really put it down. Surreal her is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. If only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate her. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. Looks like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud. Give it back. Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems... Everything you do is just as cute as you are. So your smile is up behind the sugi and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm, I'm not cute. Um, Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometimes? No, Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Nas Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing up, um, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you could set an example and help Nasuki feel comfortable even though she shares hers. Ugh. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um, yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think we'll help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the, band, the bond of the club. Isn't that right, James? Oh my gosh, I'm getting less and less enthusiastic by the sentence. Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Uh, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly came forth to what's been on my mind the entire time. 
I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. Alpha girl stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but I'm sorry, I thought... <laughs> James, you, you all, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? Um, that is, if writing poems the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these... But, okay, I've decided then. I'll join Literature Club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy. Sarah, you wrap some arms around me, jump up and down. He really did scare me for a moment. If you really came for those cupcakes, if you really just came for those cupcakes, I'd be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Well, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everybody, remember tonight's assignment to write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. James, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Yeah. I can, can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety rolling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Nasuki clean up their food. Hey James, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Let's depart from class and make our way home. Ugh. On a regular video, I would end it here, but... Nothing exciting has happened in this game at all yet. Which means I might end up recording for another like hour and uh, still not be able to end the video because I cannot end the video unless something exciting happens. Um, with that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Nasuki, Yuri... And of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the chick club? Ugh. Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Oh, something! Something's happening! It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think um, your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes the poem most. Okay, I have to decide who would like most. So, out of these girls, I guess, um, okay, she likes that. And she likes that. She likes that. I think she would like, um, anxiety. Dark, she likes dark. Uh, massacre. <laughs> fear, fear. <laughs> who, who, who likes headphones? <laughs> um, She's like that. Um, sweet. She's like that. Doki Doki. <laughs> oh, what about intellectual? She was like that. Um, determination. She's like that. Death. Death. Depression. What about love? She was like that. Sunny. She was like that. Pink. Of course. Spies, unrestrained. Okay, let's see what's up. Hi again, James. Oh, no. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Nah, don't worry. 
This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Ooh, how much more of this do I have to do? Well, I'm back at the literature club. Well, I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, James. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst in the literature club when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. He deserves any slack. Sarah told me she didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. And I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take her seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Okay. Matsugi, you um, certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in, in the club room. Mm. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and Manga. <laughs> manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. James uh, um, always gives his best as long as he's having fun. And helps with his busy work without me even asking. Oh my gosh. I have, so I have something in my eye. Okay, I think I'm... Nope. Nope. Oh, dying. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Say, so, uh, that's because your room is so messy. It's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> um, you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and James can become good friends, too. No, I think not. Um, so, uh, as usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Why? <laughs> Wait, Sayori. Uh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, you, you, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So, any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. I'll, it'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, don't make a big deal out of it if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. You know, he reaches into a bag and pulls out a book. I don't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... Uh, how is this girl accidentally being so cute? <laughs> I picked out the book. Thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Oh, I downloaded this game because it said it's a horror game. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Pew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everybody settled in, I expected... Oh. Mm. I expected um, Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica were having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in the book. I can't help but notice the intense expression. Like she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Nasuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man. Looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I 
close my eyes and I end up listening to Sayori's conversation with Monica. I'm probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everybody um, that literature club, well, what literature club is all about. The problem is that the idea of literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everybody. Something that speaks to the creative minds. Hmm. I don't know why I did that. But that doesn't solve the problem, though. Been recording this for 36 minutes already. Uh, what do you mean? Even if we came up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the, the first place if it's, all, if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, um, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her um, deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In this case, I think food will do the trick. <sighs> what kind? And, well, ah, uh, well, I guess we could cupcakes. Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, she has trouble find... She... Um, unlike me, she has trouble finding any motivation at all. Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help out but wonder what it would be like to see a world through her eyes. That that's a little too close. A wa. <laughs> I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. Yeah. I nearly fall out of my chair. He's sorry. Oh, thank God. She jumped back. <laughs> what? Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in literature club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? This whole game is an anime game. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. It's, it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Uh, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. <laughs> Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori. It's written all over you. Uh, Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Ah. I run my fingertips down the side of Sarah's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look. Your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. Try to wipe off the stain with my finger, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want you to they don't want to embarrass you. 
Like, I've just been, like, grabbing random things and fidgeting with them while I try to read all this. Personally, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sari? Why do you... Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? <laughs> That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change. Phew, that's so much better. Sarah puts her arms out and twirls around. If I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Uh, I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. Yeah. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I guess so. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sari. <clears throat> ah, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Uh, Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay. James, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Yuri still trots a way to retrieve a poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah. My <clears throat> relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone, everybody's, everyone, everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sayori, Monica, enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf turned from spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers on a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's prismine handwriting from where I sit. Um, Masuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show this poem to first? Oh, I need to remember what I did when I wrote the poem. Oops. Sorry, I accidentally clicked the button. Oh, this, it's changed the screen. Okay. Um. Definitely not her, but. I think. Nasuki, maybe? I told Nasuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. Mm, well. It's about what I expected from someone like you. It's a little blunt. Well, excuse me, it's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions, so basically it's not cute enough for your tastes. <laughs> Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. Ugh. Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, hearses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly... People can try, but that's about it. <laughs> oh, this is some quality poem. <laughs> yeah, I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? <laughs> Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because it's about things that animal can do. <laughs> 
Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take any, my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems so people can express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor with her with that last comment. I don't really care how everybody, um, how old everyone is, but if Nosuke's feeling proud, then I won't take it away from her. <clears throat> Who should I show my phone to next? Probably Yuri? I think. Mm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um, it's fine, don't force yourself. I'm not, I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah? Why do you ask? Uh, I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Bleh. <clears throat> so it's bad. No. Did I raise my voice? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you raised your face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. I might <clears throat> take you a while to get used to new people. <sighs> it's fine. I really didn't notice. Oh, what were you saying? Right. Um, it's just that you are specific writing habits that usually are typical in new writers, and having been through that myself, I kind of learned how to pick on, pick up on them. I think the most noticeable, thi noticeable thing I recognize, and a few writers try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick writing styles separate from the topic matter, um, <clears throat> and they firm fit the two together. The end result is that the both style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds a train of thought, and blah blah blah, the stamina is completely gone. She sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing. Even a simple poem, not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. Uh, it might take you some time, but it all comes with with practice and learning, by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in this club gives you valuable feedback. So you can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. Oh, I'm not sure you... The Fury is apologizing, ap apologizing to herself. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. I'm recording video on- I'm recording a video on that new game Doki Doki Literature Club though. You, you can come right now. Okay. Yeah, okay, sure. Great. Okay, <clears throat> interrupted there. I'm not sure if Yuri was apologizing to herself, to me, or Nasuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. 
I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dream dreamily, as if it's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, it isn't supposed to be a, li a literature club. Ghost under light, the, the tendrils of hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing, it must be this one, the last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future, I bathe calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past, the light of flickers, I flicker back. Great. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all, um, but it took you a long time to read. Ah, uh, well, I just don't read script very often. Actually, I think your handwriting's pretty. Uh, that's a relief. Also, I liked the poem, even though it's shirt. It was really descriptive. It wasn't too shirt. <coughs> I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since it's your first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Uh -huh. Actually, the story isn't about ghosts at all, James. Really? Must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose, um, you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps, the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in the last remaining place of comfort, unable, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yo, if I... If I go to history... That's... This, this was just from, like... This... Oh, my gosh. This was just from, like, this day. Just remember to pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Uh, so much reading. Uh. I'll read it to stay away next, okay? Oh my goodness. This is so good, James. Uh, I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Say, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea um, what I like either. Jeez, Yuri's opinion was way more constructive than this. <laughs> Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Uh, well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know. So, when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a James poem. Yes, it is. And that makes me feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. I'm really happy that... Um, I'm really happy just that you wrote one. Just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. 
Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, James, deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know. Tying new things like this for other people, that's something only really good people can do. Thanks, Harry. I'm not sure if Sari sees the full picture of my motive here, then again, I can't deny she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her at all. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay. How you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. We'll see about that. Okay, let's do Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> Great. Say, hey. This is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No. <laughs> uh, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. Came out nice. Uh, how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. That was so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, yes, but next time, I won't forget. I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Okay, one more person. Hi, James. Having a good time so far? Ah, uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you have any suggestions for the club, like activities, things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid... Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, <clears throat> want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Uh, don't worry, James. We're all a little bit embarrassed today, you know. But it's not a sort of barrier that we all learn to... But that sort of barrier that we all learn to get past soon. Um, yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had um, those sorts of things in common. Ah, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case, but maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you uh, um, show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Tired. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. <laughs> you sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, 
Sayori's writing has a kind of gentle feel to it. I can tell that she's like exploring her emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that somebody so happy could enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to, to each other their own, and you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. I could take a while before I'm comfortable doing this. That's okay, I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit um, biased to their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everybody else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ha. <laughs> anyway, well, anyway, you want to, um, anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for somebody who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have, I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see, well, let's read it then. Oh, this has a scroll wheel on it. Um, hole in wall. I could, it couldn't have been me. See the direction the <clears throat> spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My red, my reach, I don't know. Already skirts with the permanent copy of the... Uh, meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. I was. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he on the other side was looking in. It's good stuff. <clears throat> so what do you think? Hmm. It's very free firm, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. So a lot of poems have been putting emphasis sometimes between words and lines. Oh, I need to take a small five minute break. I've been recording for an hour now. Hello, everybody. It's only gone for like five minutes. Oh, that is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. That was the inspiration behind this one. Ah, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say I had some kind of emphasis. See recently. Um, it's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. I gotta plug in my phone. Oh, the scrolling might have to be cut short. Uh, paused because I'm not a go to Valero. Um, <clears throat> here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this... If you keep your um, pen in the same spot for too long, you just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew, yeah. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. It's a little more stressful than I anticipated. If everybody's judging me for my mediocre writing abilities, even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. 
Cluster of Umseo and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yoi and Asuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. Um, as I read in tandem, they watch each other. Ex they watch their expressions change. Asuki's eyebrows um, furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. <clears throat> What's with this language? Uh, um, oh, it's nothing. Let's see if he turns the poem desk on hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Man. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? Clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Uh, you mean you have to try hard to come up with something nice to say? But it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. <laughs> If I was looking for suggestions, I'd ask somebody who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. So he liked it, and James did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me? I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. And I, and James liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Nasuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, that's not what I. Uh, you, you're just. Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that James appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. And how do you know that he didn't appreciate my... <laughs> uh... Uh... Are you that full of yourself? I... No. I'm... If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh... uh um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? It wasn't the... Um, I'm not gonna read that. Nasuki. Uh, Nasuki, that's a little. This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both ghosts turned to me. They noticed I was standing there. James, <laughs> just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get um, herself and learn appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. That's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason. Okay, guys. So, um, I'm gonna leave this video here. We haven't actually gotten any scary parts yet. I don't know when we're gonna get any scary parts yet, or if we even are. One of the tags was Psychological Horror on Steam. Um, but anyway, um, I'm gonna save this here. That's a lot of save slots. Okay. Um, so I'm going to save this here, guys. Um, uh, if you're watching this around Christmas time, uh, have a Merry Christmas. And I will see you guys later. Peace.